This video will demonstrate the process of making a basic OPC connection from Top Server 5 to Wonderware System Platform using the OPC DI object. In this example, we will use the simulation project that installs with Top Server. Let's start by launching a newly created Galaxy in the Orchestra IDE. Refer to your Wonderware documentation on how to create a new system platform Galaxy. For this example, we will be using the deployment view in our sample galaxy. The first step in configuring a new project begins with the system object in the template toolbox. Expand the system object and highlight the Win Platform template object. Drag and drop the Win Platform template object under the galaxy in the deployment view. This example will use the default names, but you can name these objects as needed for your project. Next, we will need to create an App Engine system object. To do so, drag and drop the App Engine template object under the unassigned host folder. Lastly, create an Area system object by dragging and dropping the Area template object under the unassigned host folder in the deployment view. Refer to your Wonderware documentation for a better understanding of how these logical objects behave and how to best name them for your system. The App Engine object can now be assigned under the Win Platform object, and the Area object can be assigned under the App Engine object. Now that all of the system objects are created and assigned, we can configure our DI or Device Integration object. Begin by selecting the Template object from the Device Integration section of the Template Toolbox. We will select the OPC Client object template because we are making an OPC connection to the top server. Drag and drop the OPC client template object to the unassigned host folder in the deployment view to create the DI object. Double click the OPC client object under the unassigned host to open the object properties to the right of the template toolbox. If the top server and system platform are located on the same PC, leave the server node blank. If not, click on the ellipses button to the right of the server node text field to open the browse node dialog box. Select the domain of the computer node where the top server is installed to display a list of available nodes. Highlight the appropriate node name and select OK. If a remote OPC connection is being made from system platform to the top server, Windows DCOM security will play a factor in the success of your connection. If this is the case, please refer to our DCOM tutorial guide available at softwaretoolbox.com slash DCOM. Once the server node is selected, you will be able to browse for the available OPC servers by expanding the drop-down menu beside the server name field. The options in the OPC server list will depend on the OPC servers installed on that machine. Since we are connecting to top server, we will select swtoolbox.topserver.v5 from the list. If you experience problems browsing for OPC servers, please see our DCOM tutorial guide. Now that the top server is selected, Navigate to the Scan Group tab of the OPC Client object. System Platform requires that at least one scan group is configured. If all items require the same update interval, you will only need to enter one scan group. If your items require multiple update intervals, you would configure multiple scan groups, each with its own update interval. To add a new scan group, click the Add icon next to Available Scan Groups. This will allow you to give your scan group a meaningful name and define the rate at which system platform will request updates for the items in this scan group. For this example, we will name our scan group Group 1 and use the default update interval of 500 milliseconds. With a scan group configured, there are three options for adding items to a group. Add the item reference manually, browse the OPC server tag database, or import a CSV file with the tag information. First, we will add an item by manually configuring the item reference. To do so, we will enter the item address in the item reference column in the form channel name .device name .item name, where the item name can either be an actual tag name configured in the top server or a PLC address that is passed down in the item name. If using a device address, the format should be device address at data type, where the at data type is an optional appendage. If not specified, the default data type for the device address specified will be used. For our example, we will use channel1.device1.tag1. If we were using a dynamic address, we would enter channel1.device1.r0001 at word, where r0001 designates the address in the PLC 
and at word specifies the desired data type. You can either give the attribute a friendly name or leave this as the full address, including the channel and device name from top server. We will call our attribute tag1. If static tags exist in the top server, we can create the attributes by browsing to them in the top server tag database. To browse the tag database of top server, click the ellipses button to the right of the item reference column to open the OPC item browser. Expand channel 1 and click on device 1 to see the tags configured for this device in top server. To add an item to the scan group, first select the desired items by dropping and dragging them to the basket area of the OPC item browser. Once the desired items have been added to the basket, click OK to make these items associated attributes for the scan group. We will give this attribute a friendly name of tag2. Save and close the OPC client object to submit these changes. You will be prompted to check in the changes made. If you will need to add many items to your system platform project, mainly creating or browsing for OPC items may not be the most efficient method of configuration. System Platform also supports importing CSV files into the scan group attributes list for the OPC client object. In order to determine the format System Platform expects for the CSV file, it is helpful to create one item manually and perform a CSV export. Since we already have items configured in our attributes list, we can go ahead and export the CSV file. To do so, click the export button next to the attributes list to open the save as dialog box. Once the file is saved, you can open it to see your configured items in the format used by System Platform. The first column represents the attribute name, and the second column represents the item reference. We can now add more items to the CSV file. Once the desired items have been added, save the CSV file and import the file by clicking the Import button next to Associated Attributes. Once the file has been imported, you will see the new items in the attributes list. If you have a static tag database in the top server, you can take advantage of the CSV import and export feature in the top server to export the tag list, make any required changes to fit the system platform format, and import the list in a system platform. Save and close the OPC client object to submit these changes. Again, you will be prompted to check in the changes made. Once the DI object is saved, it can be assigned under the App Engine object. In order to make a connection to the top server, the final object needed is an application object. We will use the analog device application template object because we will be connecting to a tag in the top server with an analog data type. For more information on application objects, please reference your Wonderware documentation. Drag and drop the analog device application object under the unassigned host folder. Double click the object to open the properties dialog. An item must be assigned to the object. This assignment is made by entering the full item reference in the PV input source field. If you do not know the full item reference, you can click on the ellipses button to launch the attribute browser. Items added to the scan group under the client object can be browsed to and selected. To do so, select the OPC client object. The list of all attributes for this object will be shown if the show all attributes box is checked. Highlight the desired attributes and click OK. Click on the icon to save and close the application object. You will be prompted to check in the changes by clicking OK. The analog device object can now be assigned to the area system object in the deployment view. To do so, drag and drop the object from the unassigned host folder under the area object. Now that all objects have been created and assigned, the next step is to deploy the Galaxy. To do so, right-click on the Win Platform object in the Deployment view and select Deploy. This will open the Deploy dialog box. Leaving the default setting selected will deploy all objects configured. Click OK to begin the deployment process. Once the deployment process is complete, click Close. You can now view the live data by opening the System Platform Object Viewer. Highlight the Analog Device object in the Deployment view and navigate to the object menu of the Orchestra IDE interface. Select View an Object Viewer to open the object viewer and see the present value and quality of the item. To subscribe to Changing Values, right-click on the attribute and select Add to Watch. This adds the attribute to the watch window located at the bottom of the interface. This concludes our demonstration on making a basic OPC connection 
from Top Server 5 to Wonderware system platform. As always, our support team is available to help you every step of the way. If you find you have questions or need any assistance, please do not hesitate to contact us.